Hello, everyone. This is Paul Bertarelli reporting from the AUVSI show in Florida. That's the Association of Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm at Kennedy Space Center where they've got the UAS demonstration line set up. And one of the challenges facing all the companies in this industry is adapting military technology to civil uses. And one company that's working on that is called Prioria. And they've got a product called the Maverick, which you could really think of as a carbon fiber bird, and it, it's capable of carrying multiple sensors. Here's Derek Lyons to explain some of what this product can do. Well, the Maverick was designed primarily for the military. The U.S. military was the first market that we worked with. Uh, they wanted something that was covert, that was small, lightweight, and tactical. And the design was, was made to look like a bird in the sky, make it very easy to launch it very quickly, and have a sensor above the desired target that you're looking at. So um, what, we, what we did from that initial design, we started going forward and saying, what other markets would be accessible with this type of technology? And it became obvious to us that the first responder market had very paramilitary-esque powers, where there's search and rescue, there's um, accidents, there are crime scenes and things of that sort, and you needed to be able to have a standoff distance with a remote sensor that can actually catch everything as it happens. So that's how we uh, started moving into that commercial space. The sensors that are available in the system are very modular because of how we designed the, the plane. So we can do a daytime sensor, a nighttime uh, SWIR for obscured vision, smoke or haze, and we can also do um, combination sensors if necessary if you need to have stabilized imagery on board or you want to be able to have a daytime and nighttime. Things like that are available through this, this really kind of easy plug and play system. What we say, first of all, you have to be trained. And second of all, you have to be, if this is in commercial space, you have to follow all the FAA guidelines, getting COAs and things of that sort, so that you're uh, legally flying the, the system. Um, once those things are, are done, you have a typical flight profile. You want to have about 200 feet or so to in a clear area to launch and recover. And um, beyond that, then the plane's on its own. It takes care of itself. This, this system here flies between 45 and 60 minutes, depending upon the payload and the environmental conditions. So the typical flight profile is about 275 feet AGL up to about 700 feet AGL above ground level. The system was designed to be autonomous. So it was designed to have waypoints given to a GPS locations where it flies to and takes care of itself. But we also know that there needs to be more fidelity at times for, for an operator to be able to do certain closer missions or bring it in in a more uh, precise way. So it goes down to a manual mode. And it's, it's, you flip a switch and you go from autonomous to manual. And in that manual, you have three levels of manual that allow you to um, have the plane take care of its altitude and you just fly left and right. Or you can take care of the pitch and yaw of it as well. It, it just depends on your, your proficiency and your, and your need. There are fill safes built into the system, so if you have it on an autonomous track, even if you have it on a manual track, if it loses communications, uh, it will, it's programmed, pre-programmed to do what you need it to do. You say, um, in two minutes, look for communication or not. And once you, once you do those things, um, the system says, I need comms, I need comms, and then if it does not get the comms, it goes to its fail safe area and flies around to get its comms and you can reestablish it and then take it back out to the mission that it's, it's handling. Um, that's, that's a part of the fly home capability. 